couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another full fingerstyle arrangement lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. This lesson is finally time for the Game of Thrones theme. First I'm gonna play you my arrangement so you can see in here how it goes, and then we're gonna break it down lick by lick with tabs right here on the screen and everything. Don't be alarmed by some of the techniques or some of the licks. Um, I'm gonna show you everything, I'm gonna teach you step by step what to do, I'm gonna show you the techniques, I'm gonna show you what to do, I'm gonna show you what I do, and I'm gonna tell you what you can do if you want to make your own variation out of my arrangement. But first you have to hear it, so it goes like this, enjoy. <laughs> Alright, so that's how it goes. Let's jump right into the lesson, shall we? 7-0 on the A string. Okay, we're playing the intro now. So then you play three hammer on to five, hammer on to seven on the A string. Okay, and then the open A string. How do you pull the double hammer on off? You play it with your index finger, middle finger, and pinky. Why? Um, because this handles the stretch best. Um, it's easier to stretch the index finger and the middle finger, um, easier than stretching uh, the ring finger and the pinky because the pinky's tendon is shorter. So it's easier than because then you really feel the pull uh, on the pinky's tendon and it's really uncomfortable and also dangerous for your tendons. You don't want carpal tunnel syndrome. So. Um, Three hammer on to five, hammer on to seven on the A string, then the open A string again. Then you repeat it twice more. Three, five, seven, double hammer on, open A string, twice more. So you get it three times. The first half of the intro is this. Okay? Then you keep on playing a double hammer on, but this time it's four, five, seven, okay? Moving from a minor scale lick to a major scale lick. Um, it's four, five, seven on the A string, and then the open A string four times. Okay, still a double hammer on. So that's your intro, basically. Okay. Um, then you play an A minor chord, and I play it like this. Uh, Half a bar, five, five, five on strings one, two, and three with the open A string. And then um, you can also play seven on the D string if you want, if you want the fuller chord sound. Um, and the rhythm here, the basic rhythm that you go back to whenever you have space to fill, is one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one. So you can pick the chord with your fingers on the first beat. then strum the rest. Down, down, up, down, up. Okay, one, two, and three, and. Or you can use your fingers. Okay, any pattern that comes naturally. Okay, you could hear that this didn't come naturally because I wasn't in the moment. So um, any pattern that comes naturally in that one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and rhythm, 
by all means, play it. Um, the rule is that whatever is comfortable and natural to you would sound best. So uh, that's why I don't show you exactly everything I do. I just show you the important stuff. Now the next uh, riff, the first riff, starts with this chord. Okay, and we're gonna talk about the percussion. Don't worry, we're gonna talk about the percussive technique and the percussive pattern at the end of the lesson after we're done with all the notes. So you start with this. This is A5. Um, it's 12, 10, and 9 on strings 1, 2, and 3 with the open A string. Okay, and then I pick strings 3, 1, 3, 1, 2. Kind of an Irish guitar lick, but it fulfills both uh, accompaniment and melodic uh, purposes, so this is what I play first. Then uh, I resolve this into A minor by playing this. Okay? It's um, 8 and 10 on strings 1 and 2. You slide it to 10 and 12. Then you play 12 and 13, same strings, 1 and 2. Then back down to 8 and 9, and you can, uh, 8 and 10, and you can add 9 on the third string for the full A minor chord sound. And of course, this is a D minor shape, and if you take D minor and calculate it note by note, you'll see that up here it's A minor. So, um, okay, even this works. Instead of playing this, you can do this. And then, okay, A5, A minor, as a harmony to the first melodic lick. So here, you see, you have options. Or, and then you play eight hammer on to 10 on the E string, and then you play this E minor chord. Okay, seven, eight, nine on strings one, two, and three with the E bass string, the sixth string. Then you pull off your finger from the E string to zero. Okay, so you get this. Okay, now when you pull it off, you take the chord off and play this. Five and seven on strings four and five. This is an E minor chord head. Now, you want to keep your E string open, so make sure you're not touching it. Okay, when you're making the transition. So, um, then you play this. Okay, and I harmonize it as well. So, it's um, 5 hammer on to 7 on the D string. Then the open B string, the open 2nd string. Then the A string on 7. Now, I harmonize it by playing this. I play strings 4 and 5, then I hammer on the 5 to 7 on the D string. Then I harmonize the second string with the third. Okay, it's this is still E minor, so you can play strings two and three together. Then instead of playing the A string by itself, I harmonize again with the D string. You don't have to do this. You can um, play the the thin melody version. It sounds awesome as well. Um, or you can harmonize it. Then it's G, but let's play everything first. Or then A minor, hammer on, then E minor with the pull off. Then okay. Again, we're gonna talk about bass notes and the percussion later on. I'm teaching you the melody now. Um, or harmonize. Then you have G in a C chord shape. So you put on a C chord and move it up to 8, 9, and 10. Okay, on strings 2, 4, and 5. Okay, and you also have the open G string because this is a G chord, so why not? And you put your pinky on 10 on the E string. Okay, so you get this this voicing. 
Um, and again, I play this. Okay, the same picking pattern as the first A5 chord. I play the chord, then I play strings 3 1, 3 1, 2. Then the next melody line is this. Okay? Using your first finger, your index finger, you play 8 to slide to 7 on the E string. Then you play 10 again using your pinky on the E string. Then you put your first finger back on 8 on the second string. Okay, so it's. Then you play 8 7 again on the E string. This time you pull it off using two fingers. And then you play this D chord. Okay, it's 5 7 7 on strings 1, 2, and 3 with the open D string. And your melody is this. Okay, so um, for the first E string, you play the whole chord. Then you play the third string. Then on the second string, you play 7 slide to 8. Okay, using your pinky. And then the E string again, then again. Okay, it's a loop. So, um, G and D. Okay, you can play um, five on the E string and the D string as your first note instead of the whole chord. Instead of, um, again, depending on your own style and preference. Um, so that's the first riff, the first half of the theme. A5. A minor. E minor. Transition into another a, uh, E minor shape. Then G. first riff of the two riffs. Now for the second riff. Um, the second riff has two halves. The first half is a bit challenging. The second half is really easy. Um, you put on this F chord. Right? It's a bar on five C chord shape. So you have five, six, five, seven, eight. And you play it like this. Okay, you use an artificial harmonic. Now, an artificial harmonic is where you put your, you know this, the natural harmonic, it's the same thing, um, but artificially produced. Now, um, artificially because you're fretting um, the strings. So um, we're on five on the E strings, so we need to uh, produce the harmonic, which is the overtone, which is 12 frets above five. 5 plus 12, 17. So, it's on 17. You place your index finger right above the steel, the steel fret. You touch the string. You don't press it down. You don't want the note itself. You want an overtone, a natural, um, an artificial harmonic to keep playing. Um, and you do that by touching the string and using either your third finger, your ring finger, or your pinky to pick. Okay, like this. And, okay, and we'll be playing the bass note with it, so you pick with both your uh, ring finger or your pinky and the thumb. You pick the, the bass note as well, the fifth string, so it's this movement. Okay, you keep your index finger extended, and use these two fingers to pick both uh, the first and fifth strength. Okay, it's a funny movement, but this is the movement. This is how it is. This is how you do it. And then you play the rest of the rhythm, two and three and. Okay, so it's, okay, twice. So it's one, two and three and, one, two and three and. Again, you can do it with your fingers if you prefer. Okay, so, and then you do it with C, 
Okay, and you put a C chord on with three on the E string, a high G note, and again, three plus 12, 15. Okay, this is your harmonic, and you do exactly the same thing. Then D minor. Your artificial harmonic here is on one, and it's 13 this time. Then it's A minor, so it's zero on the E string. It's the natural harmonic this time on 12 because it's an open string, so it's a natural harmonic. Um, and then after you're done with the artificial harmonics part, you play F again. This time you pick strings two, three, four, and five. You continue playing the rhythm. Then you take the pinky off of the fifth string. You play strings two, three, four, and five again as D minor seven. This time just one bar. Remember, up till now it was two bars. It was one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and, and then a chord change. Okay, two bars. Now it's um, one bar. Technically, it's six eighths, so it's one bar. Okay, it's one, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and, but counting uh, all of that using six numbers instead of three, is a bit more confusing if you're a beginner. That's why I refer to it as one, two, and three, and instead of one, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and because that would confuse you if you're trying to count it in your head while you play. Okay, just wanted to make sure that um, you know my reasoning for um, contracting the bars here. So uh, this is technically half a bar. Okay, it's okay, but let's treat it as one bar. Okay, and then the second bar, or the second half of the bar, now that we've talked about it, um, is E7. It's a D7 shape on the fourth fret, so it's four, three, four, and the open E bass string, and then A minor. Again, the first um, the first shape we've played of A minor, it's five, 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 and the open uh, A string. You can also add seven on the fourth. And now it's this. Okay, so you pick the chord, then you play the second string. Then it's a hammer-on from six to eight on the second string. Then the open E string or the chord, and it repeats. E string, and then five, six to eight, on the second string. And then you stop on eight. And then you play the same lick, only quietly. And you can end on five on the E string, or you can do what I did when I demonstrated it and play the ending uh, that I added to the arrangement. Okay, it's nice. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but I have to teach it anyway. This is my arrangement, it's my lesson. So six and five on strings, two and five. You slide them to eight and seven. And then you play five on the E string with the open A string. Okay, so. Now let's talk about the percussion and the bass notes. The rhythm here is one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one. And as I mentioned before, it's one, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and. Okay, so on the one, you play the bass, and on four, you play the hit, or the hit and the strum. If you don't know uh, these percussive techniques, uh, watch my six percussive techniques video right here on Lick and Riff and come back to play this. Or watch till the end of the lesson and then go learn it and add it to uh, your playing, to your arrangement. The hits really scare her. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so um, we can go, go, go. Okay, so um, now that we're back, uh, let's focus. So it's one, two, and three, and hit, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and hit, two, and three, and. Okay, I prefer to hit and strum to keep the chord going. Okay, so bass, hit, bass, hit. Okay, and then when we play the riff, it's this bass, hit. 
Okay? And you have to hit and strum because you have to play 10 on the second string as your melody note. Okay? And then it's bass, strum, and hit. So, okay? Then it's bass. Then the hidden strum on the open second string. And then on the next open second string, you have the bass again. Okay, so it's bass, hit, bass, hit. Okay, I suggest that you practice each lick um, separately to add the uh, basses and the uh, strum hits. Um, until you're comfortable with it. Then it's kind of the same idea. It's bass, hit, uh, and strum when you need the second string. Then bass, then hit and strum again when you use the second string. Bass with E string, then hit with E string. Bass, bass, hit, bass, hit, okay? Now for this, okay? This is easier because the hard part is getting this, then it's just rhythm. So, bass, hit, then again, bass, hit, bass, hit, bass, hit. Then again, bass, hit, bass, bass again, this is an exception, and then hit with the E string, bass, hit, and then no more hits and no more bass notes. So before you practice this, uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons right here uh, on the channel for you to learn, and I upload a new one every couple of days or so, so join the Lick and Riff community and learn guitar for free. Also for free, the tabs in the description below, you'll find the link to the website to go download the tab for free. Everything is for free right here on Lick and Riff, but if you want to give something back anyway, there's a large blue donation button right above the tabs. You can't miss it. It's large, it's blue, it says donate, and everything goes right back into producing these lessons, the arrangements, the exercises, everything, theory lessons, music lessons, arrangements, full arrangement lessons. It all takes time and effort. So if you want to help out, I'd be very grateful for your donation. Whatever you choose to donate, thank you in advance. Also, feel free to share this lesson with anybody you want. This lesson is free and I'd appreciate, um, you know, spreading the word about Lick and Riff and these lessons. You go practice this now. Have fun. Let me know how it goes and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.